for the select board meeting at 6 30 a.m. Um, Divided by the number of taxpayers and when you just have for someone for a town like us, when you just have one taxpayer that skews our average up, has the effect of making our minimum mandatory contribution to all of our schools higher and um, substantially higher. We had just a few years ago when. We had just two tax taxpayers that were very blessed. Um, that uh, that we we had that that was the almost the entire reason why we had a double digit percentage increase in the school. I remember when Michael Kittredge moved to Waitley temporarily <clears throat> before he moved to Lumberton. Same thing happened to Waitley in Massachusetts, and especially as goes Conway, when you have billionaires into your town it raises our taxes for everybody else everybody else has to subsidize them in effect so this is a good thing way to good equalize place. things a little more wish it was more okay. right. so you have a copy of it this is mine we'll be opening the warrant tonight correct that's on the agenda yes mm -hmm. okay and 
So you, right. you're in time. Ooh, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for sure. that. Yeah. So yeah, and you're gonna give that to Bernie for something. I have the original. Okay, great, great, great. Thank you. The unfinished business. New business. Point Roger. Ray Roger goes as the Oak Upper Pioneer Valley Veteran Services District Advisory Board Representative for the remainder of the term. And he doesn't know this, but he's never going to be allowed to. Who is he replacing? He's replacing John O'Rourke from several years ago. Ah, Nobody yeah. has been doing this for two years now. We get notices from them all the time. So this is good. So thank you, Roger. Thank you. Do we need a motion if we just say he's appointed? So, no, you should yeah. move to I'll move to appoint Roger. Second. Aye. 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 All of your aye. Very good. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here. Here. We're live. So here on on you, you, you're you welcome can, to come and you can be here next, or home on the Zoom. You can be on camera. You can sit next to Veronique, or you can sit at that table by yourself. Yeah, which, which has the microphone. Oh, which has so, the microphone. Which is better. that little black oh, yeah. thing right there is the mic for you. Okay, I love said that it's coming. He is. I'm sure he loves it. He said he's coming. So the next item on the new business, a request from the town administrator to hire capital strategic solutions for help with ARPA reporting in. So I we suppose this already. Didn't I said, uh, no, this was a that was a previous consulting. It was uh, a different. That was consultant? a different consultant, okay. and that was uh, before we hired and paid for that person. The law changed. But this is a different consultant, and I remain sort of fairly allergic to the concept. Of consultants. Um, however, I did say to Veronica, uh, and be open to her request. Uh, so, why don't you tell us why this is important to you, why you are requesting this, despite? the known allergies to consultants. Well, as you may be aware with the, the COVID funding that came in before under the CARES Act, the state acted as a mediator between the federal government and treasury and the municipality. So I have help, lots of help for being able to ask questions, know the process, know what was legally required of me. Um, with ARPA, it's not the same. We are uh, direct, directly connected to the treasury, but we do not have the help. Um, when I first came on board and ARPA, you know, was already in place, um, our interim Ross Perry had recommended this company. And um, I have to say, after looking through all of the different guidance that they send out, and they do send out a lot of guidance, mind you, they also change the rules. Um, the amount of time it would take me to go through and make sure I've got everything straight is would be great, on top of which I still won't really know if I am in compliance or if. So this would give me somebody to say, can we expend money on this? The select board wants to spend money on this project. Is this allowable? Do we have to change the reporting? In just the last couple of weeks, we found out, first I was told, well, if the select board votes to use all of the um, the money that they're allowed to under the 10 million rule and use it as lost revenue. If they want to use it in another category that's part of ARPA, then the reporting is completely different. And what's the 10 million rule? So there's, there's the four categories of ARPA, health related, there's lost revenue, um, there's the infrastructure, and I'm forgetting the other one. Um, so out of the, I, I think it was pay. Um, so out of those four, originally the consultant Phil was talking about was when our, our auditor said, we can help you figure out how much under lost revenue you can take. You know, with what percentage of the monies that we, and then 
said to change the rule and we can take up to, if we get up to 10 million, well, obviously we didn't get 10 million of ARPA funds, but we can now declare. So we didn't have to do the calculations to figure out how much we were allowed to take. So now that we can take it all as 10 million, well, then the question comes up, okay, well, if I wanted to, you know, if we wanted to do something, for instance, one of the first, the first thing the board voted for were the rapid tests. That comes under the health, which is a different category, which means the reporting on that might be different than on the lost revenue. And then in talking with Jennifer Thompson from the Capital Strategics, at the day I talked to her, she said, yesterday I just found out that actually, no, you can just do the same reporting with lost revenue and use the other category. These are the kinds of things that it could take me hours and hours and hours and hours and hours each week to keep up on. So this is somebody who came highly recommended, who was already doing this work for quite a few small towns. And I wanted to ask the board for, it's $160 an hour. We can create our own contract. Um, she gave a proposal, but we can create our own contract. And I wanted to ask for 3,200, which would be um, 20 hours. One of the things that I would propose we do is actually have her come in and answer questions from the select as well, and the ARPA working group. And can we pay not for much, that? Not unless the, we're not getting billed for $160 an hour for it. But then that I'll submit my questions for writing. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> okay, you, our, I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, I, I know that our town attorney charges less money than she does. Just, just, just note that. I'm, I'm concerned. I have to say about the town's liability in the long run. If, if we do something that's out of compliance, I don't think the federal government's going to be particularly um, understanding. Shall I say? I, that's where I absolutely. I, I, I think that's a real leap of faith to make that assertion. I don't think. The intent in passing the ARPA law was to require every municipality in the country to hire a consultant to understand it. That if it is in fact so confusing that you can't figure it out, imagine how the town officials in Mississippi and Alabama are trying to figure it out. Like, you know, uh, the, so just it's just there's not they're not going to be coming after people that make mistakes. Uh, because if they do, they would have to throw the entire public officials in all Confederate states. But jail. they could just deny it. Right? I, mean, I, I don't. Uh, I mean, I, you don't want to make mistakes. I, I get that, and I get yeah. that. I get that. That um, our town administrator feels that this is important. That I'm not the one doing the work, and I'm not the one that whose life would be made easier by a consultant. However, I am not. Uh, real thrilled with just, uh, I don't know, 20 hours or whatever it was, it is that we're buying. And I would propose a much smaller number to see how it goes. Just re up, or, re -up her if she likes it. If it's as good as, if, if the consultant can walk on water as advertised, um, then we'll sign in. But I, I would suggest just a, a five hour initial taste test. And, um, and let's see how it goes. And if it's a good thing, then we'll, we'll re up it. Can we use ARPA funds to pay for the? Absolutely. That's no. this is an ARPA yeah. request. Yeah. So I, I, I think you apparently think this is a good idea. I think I we know you support. I know. I know. I know. That's right. why. That's why I'm not. So, I, I, that's I, why I left it on the ward. I know you I, I know you both would. Would support it and yeah. you're very supportive people. Yeah. I mean, I don't like it so much. So the 3200 means we'll give her 3200 no matter how much we use. No, no, no. no that's so, yeah, yeah. authorizing be written up, up to that to amount for the hour and and it would be the same. You know, I would say, okay, I would like you for two hours for this. I'm going to save up all of my questions. <laughs> and how much time Great. is it going to take you to answer them? That's correct. We're hoping we can do it in five hours, Phil. Well, the thing is that, of course, it would be sporadic because it depends on what the board decides they would like to spend the money on. And at that point, we can say, OK, plus the the first reporting is coming up April 30th. I really need help with that. <laughs> so, um, but you know, we don't have to obligate the monies until 2024. So that this could be that we spend 
a thousand dollars this year and then nothing for a while until the board decides what it is they want to spend the rest of the money. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. I, I know, I know. <laughs> so you want to make a motion? Well, Phil won't. Um, no. Well, I, I no. suspect you won't. Yeah. That's... No, I'll, I'll make a motion that, um, yeah, that we uh, allocate up to $3,200 for um, the ARPA consultant for help with reporting and compliance. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You know, I, I will show no, my support. Show there. Oh, show my there, support. there we go. Thank you. Once a no vote becomes futile, <laughs> then the yeah. symbolism, <laughs> the symbolism is like, let's just, because I want to support. Well, thank you very much. Support. <laughs> much appreciated. Right, how much I hold my notes. I still want to support. <laughs> um, okay, so we also uh, on the new business is a vote to open the warrant town meeting our annual warrant and also to set that's two separate things set a closing date as well so first one a motion to officially open i move to open the warrant annual town meeting on saturday june 4th 2022 i moved second and so, i'm sorry did you want to add in there the closing date two separate motions oh sorry okay and all um aye Favor, aye. 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 It's unanimous. And a second motion to set the closing date for the annual warrant for the town of Conway annual town meeting, Saturday, June 4th. The closing date to be set would be Monday, April 26th. Fifth. Sorry, I put the wrong. After which we can make no amendments to the warrant. Um, there is a procedure where the board can reopen the warrant, but, but um, okay. it's Brought, it's difficult. Right, so. But it's possible. And then that's. But, but yes, the. Gives us time to get the mail. And... No, no, this is. Um, it won't go to the printers till May. But, so, but, but this, this is something. So what we should. This will work. Do we have a vote yet on the closing date? No. No. Okay. Um, when, but the, the, the um, you can, uh, I mean, we want to publicize it. We put it, usually there's a notice that usually goes to the reporter. And there's, it's a, a little blurb in the reporter that says town meeting warrants open until April 25th. Um, but I, I'm not, I don't think we ever, we don't do a mailing about that. Right. So we have three weeks. Yeah. Put it. And, and people that wanted something like like Pixie just did, they already had that in mind. Mm -hmm. and... um, so we need to take a vote on the closing date of April 25th. So we'll move that we set a closing date of April 25th. Yes. Your second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Also on the for the agenda for new business, a discussion of a possible letter to the Frontier Regional School Committee regarding potential amendments to the Frontier Regional School for Town Operating Agreement. Um, so when I said that there was a big meeting coming up tomorrow, that's what that's what this is. And uh, I mean, on, on the one hand, it's it's really nice. It's going to be the first school committee meeting in two years, the big joint meeting with all the four towns in the frontier. Um, but this is the first one that is gonna be regular order. It's not gonna, there, nothing on the agenda involves pandemic anything or masks or rule, you know, special rules. And so- You have to have something exciting. So, um, and um, there is a request and I'll find out exactly what the nature of the request is to open up the four town operating agreement which is a which is the equivalent of a constitutional convention once you open it up so what's um, the procedure for doing that uh, all four towns have to vote a unanimous but, vote in see, the and there, there's just that question even even that question alone sets up 
the 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 agreement originally says all any amendment has to be adopted by all four towns. Um, but there, the school committee itself is discussing and voting on whether to open it. And to me, opening the agreement is a change to the agreement. And just the decision to open it should be by all four towns. But um, apparently, the school committee is. But, uh, and and there are several drivers to this, and I, I, I'm I, you know to, to me, um, I'm not a big fan of of opening it. If we are going to open it, Deerfield has to pay, and um, and I don't you know and and to me there's two things that that from day one. And so we this operating agreement is from 1954, so that's what we're talking about. So we, we opened it. In we, we did do a few. We, there's been like three amendments over the years, each each one occasioned by a different U.S. Supreme Court case. Um, but the the uh, fr from day one, you know, the, this the fact that the school was built in South Deerfield uh, enriched that whole community in ways that we have never been properly compensated for. That there's really good data from the Federal Reserve uh, that shows that if you have a high performing school in one mile walking distance of your home, the property value is 10 to 15% higher than it would be otherwise. And I want that to take, and, and to me, that's just mathematics, that they, they've been accruing town wealth that we've been subsidizing, and that, that if we're going to be opening the agreement, mathematics says we have to share in some of your town's wealth that we've helped to create. Um, the second thing so that, that would have to pass and, and, and all four would have to pay. And, and the, the second thing is that just two years ago, for the first time, we were the school frontier received a sewer and water bill from the South Deerfield Water District, which was never a part that uh, never a party to our agreement. But our agreement in 1954 says we all pay Deerfield. I think Conway had to pay Deerfield a thousand dollars in 1954. Um, for the land, for the school, in exchange, Deerfield agrees never to charge any taxes or any other fees for the use of that property. And at the time, it was all wells, and there wasn't a sewer system. But to me, um, and, and I, the, the vote at the school committee was twenty-seven to one against me. But um, the, <laughs> to, to me, the, this was the, the, that the, the imposition of a sewer and water bill violated our original four town operating agreement and um and and not only that but they 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 can't meter us they can't meter because it's used to too many whatever so they just decided that it would be the first year would be fifty thousand a year that was just what they and the school said yes um and and i think since then it's going whatever but to me that that that's a no-no and that has to be addressed if we're paying things like that so other towns have their own wish list um, there's a desire that the, the teachers union wanted us to do this um, because they want all of the health insurance deductibles equalized among the four towns. And if you, um, so right now Conway's, the Conway has 75. Among our elementary schools. Yeah, among our elementary schools. Conway has 75, 20, so 25 de deductible. I think Sunderland is 55, 45. Uh. And a much bigger municipal workforce. So raising, and, and the state law says you can't lower yours, everybody has to be brought up. So raising Sunderland's deductible and Deerfield, I think. What's the issue that's really driving open? I mean, causing yeah, this, you're, you're, you're oh, saying this should get thrown be, in. Because the teachers in. say that, that that the numbers of comp that compensation, we, we address compensation percentage of increases, steps, this, that. But in fact, it's different for, as between all of the schools because because they have different amounts of health insurance deductibles. So and that's the driving. Issue. Yes, and until until we can make that fair for everybody, you know, we can't address it contractually because we can't say, you know, okay, we're going to do a contract for suddenly teachers get a little bit more than Conway, whatever. The math is insanely difficult. It's, uh, so is it the teachers that are driving the reopening of the well they're not they're not part of the school but um so is that really a, the beginning of trying to regionalize the elementary school 
Um, you know, that's, uh, you know, and I, I spoke to, I, I asked Natalie about that when she was there last week. I said, if we're going to, because I know this has been kicked around for a while, because the benefit to regionalize, re, regionalizing, or to, to having a full K through 12 district is we get transportation reimbursement for our local. So Conway Grammar School's school bus, those three buses every day, we don't get any reimbursement from the state from. Um, and if they were part of it, then we'd get the same, sometimes 70%, sometimes 50%, always wait the last minute for reimbursement. Um, so we don't, so, so there's a financial incentive to do that, but we did the math, what it would cost to bump everybody's insurance up to, to Conway's rate. Um, actually, it would be the Frontier's rate because Frontier is 80-20. And and um, which would also mean town hall, all Conway's employees, all town hall, everybody. <laughs> so every everybody in all municipalities get yeah, go to yeah, eight twenty. Yeah. The cost of that was over a million dollars per year. Per town. Per, just... No, for all all four. Okay. So and, and you just care. So you, no matter how, I don't know how many years you want to go out in the future, but conceivably it's billion yeah. over somebody's lifetime. It's hundreds of millions of dollars that we're talking about, and that's why I said to Natalie that. The only way that we can do it is if the state can let us start at zero by taking care of that big nut in the very beginning um, and, and get everybody's health. And, and they've done that in the past. They used to do that. They did it as recently as 10 years ago, but apparently there's nobody that, I don't know, apparently that's not gonna happen. Um, so uh, I was gonna have language in a letter opposing any open that Conway select board opposes any opening of the whatever um and I, I I didn't because I don't know, quite know what is going to be happening I didn't think it was entirely appropriate but um I don't know what you feel I, I solicit your thoughts about what you think of opening I, I don't know about writing a letter I'm not in favor of regionalizing the four elementary schools and so which feels that that's you know what this is heading towards mm -hmm. uh, the rest of it is you know and and, and, and i will say i will say that one of the reasons why that might be appealing to some people that regionalizing the four element is because it would potentially create a mechanism with which one of the elementary schools could be closed right because right. you cannot the only way you can achieve any kind of substantial year-over-year -year savings in an educational system is close your physical facility um, because your principal and all that. Those and are I really watch what's been going on in Mohawk with attempting to do uh, that. What's and going on Lyden, out of Worthington? Lyden and Warwick, and Warwick are devastated. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, and but at the same time, we have three elementary schools within two miles of each other, which is completely insane. And nobody would choose to do that. So. And at some point, if the, if the, dem, if the, demographic, if the demographics keep up the way they are, we're, we, you just have to well, say at one point. Can choose to voluntarily do it. And, I mean, the, and, but, but, the, but the other, the, the flip side of that is that if you give other towns the right to weigh in on whether your town still right. has a school or not, it might be your town yeah. that doesn't have a yeah. school because. We are 17% of this racket. And uh, there's, you know, the towns that really should close their elementary schools are 48% and 38%. So, uh, um, you know, and, and what it's Worthington, right? Worthington had their- There's closed, yeah. There, there's closed, even though there's was the best one because the neighboring towns teamed up and said, yeah, we just want your money, not your school. Mm -hmm. um, Quality too, all mine. Palmont is headed in that direction, I think. Yep. So, so what do you think, Erica? Any thoughts on the subject? You don't have that thoughts. No, I mean I do. I just, um, I mean we don't. I like <laughs> having our own elementary school, and if that means we get to set our insurance rates. Okay. Well, you know, I, I, I'm not sure I think we need to open the, the, the agreement for that. That's I mean, is this, is this happening? I mean, are they definitely going to open this? I mean, is this open for discussion? I mean, they're going to have this meeting. 
Uh, it's on the agenda. Um, it's on the agenda along with setting. It's it's a two hour meeting and setting the school calendar. And, and that, all, or, and that all four of the school committee have to agree. I think that as currently, well, at least don't know because you didn't. I didn't I hear know. you say that there's a rule written down somewhere. Only how they make amendments is the rule. But yeah, uh, there is no, no rule. No, no. How our, does, how does our operating happen? agreement is um, like six paragraphs, like two pages. It's um, it's remarkably simple and just doesn't cover anything that you think it should or would. Here's how much you have to pay to build the building, and uh, any changes require all four towns' approval. That's it. The last time I remember it being, and I'm pretty sure it was open, was whether we were going to put the word in as the mascot <laughs> in our agreement. And that was to make it so it couldn't be voted down by the school committee, by the Conway School Committee. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that didn't work out. There's, there's still resentment about that. That's yeah, the there is, but not much. Yeah. All right. I guess we'll just see what awaits us tomorrow. Um, Six thirty-two, almost, almost right on time. All right. We're all here. You have a I'm, first, first time in first, first, uh, first time in over two years. Yeah. Yes. Well done. Yeah. We made it. Thanks. We did. Amen. We made it. So the 630 Joint Finance Committee, you want to call your committee to I hereby call the Finance Committee jointly held with Select Board in order to order it. Is Roy coming? Will he be on Zoom he's, or he's there? Oh, hi Roy. <laughs> right, he's there. So he's here. So I'm... All right. <laughs> Good point. He's probably sick of the place. Runs me home. So we did you see the package with the with the um proposed? Can anyone hear me? Hey, Roy. Yes, yes, we can hear you. We can hear you, Roy. Okay, I got the mic working properly. Okay. okay. Uh, to answer your question of earlier, I just keep it Kristen and for order of preference. Do you want to know? Do you want to you want to put it on the screen? Oh, uh I'm not sure. I don't think I have it set up. The capital? Yeah. I don't think I have it on this. Oh, do I just put the articles up? One, article three. No, because um, that's not, you don't need that. That's not the capital. It's not on the chat. Oh, yeah, it is. So, um, the grammar school proposes four uh, separate items as a uh, in their so The grammar school does not do, does not propose, does make, I should just, I should rephrase that. The grammar school lets us know what their needs are. And, it, and um, they don't make a motion. They don't, they don't submit a warrant article to the capital, whether or not to fund something. A capital expense for the grammar school is completely up to the town. But it's, they generate the numbers and, and everything else. So the last year we we bought the uh, the replacement generator. That was the big ticket item for sixty thousand. And we also did an eleven thousand item for uh, flooring. So and the generator actually is going to come in under sixty thousand, which is good. But this year, this, there's three separate items. Uh, number one is air conditioning. Do, do, do the split, mini split air conditioning for the remainder of the classrooms. That is a total of 45,000. The second item is- How many classrooms? I believe that's five, four or five. Uh, it's classroom, so there's only like seven classrooms coming to kindergarten, right? Well, we, we did the library and the music room previously, too. I don't think they count as classrooms, but... The administration have it? Principal's office have it? I think she's got a window. 
unit? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Does, so does the conference room right next to it. But I and I I know one of the ones that they really wanted was the kindergarten, the full day kindergarten in June. Yeah, right. Um, and and uh, Tell them no school else. but you know, and this is one of those things that when they built this school, they weren't thinking climate change and they weren't thinking air conditioning and all that. And we actually have um, in it's in our uh, contracts with all of our employees that if that 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 school gets uh, shortened, that school day gets shortened if at nine if at eight a.m. the temperature inside the build it, it, it is uh, greater than eighty degrees. Um, so. One, but it, and it, there's all the it does it impacts learning a lot. Sure, of course. And it's all the other schools now have it, so you're competing with that. Did you get by without it, or did you have it? We got by without it, but our but our our summers weren't as hot, and our winters were colder, and all that stuff. It, they were. It's just I'm gonna guess there was more kids in the class. That too. <laughs> the restaurants figures. 50 BTUs per person. I, I know. We had it tougher. These kids got it easy. <laughs> well, I'm, but not, I'm not saying that. I do. I say it all the time. I yeah. say it all the time. We walked both ways to school and it was uphill the whole time. <laughs> um, so the second item was the year was the flooring upgrades for 16,000. That's a continuing project as well. And the so been using it for put 11 towards that or last year last more. year we did we did 11 so the 16 is, is more money is more floors okay what's happening with the floors phil what are they doing? replacing rugs is that covid related yeah it's um covid related it's so it's a mandate i don't even it's not even a mandate it's, it's, it's that they've reached their lifespan and oh, um all right this is the yearly classroom i mean do they answer it's a program if they started a program okay. i think three years ago we've been funding it for three years now doing flooring upgrades so the base plan of, and that's basically uh, replacing the carpet uh now carpets yeah it's some, some of it's tile. some it's carpet yeah, some carpet it's where it's carpet tile where it's tile and being a linoleum something like yeah. that yeah yeah And then the last item is uh, is the one that I get stopped. I get told every day, "Get us the dishwasher." Um, and that's <laughs> yeah, because we have Conway residents that run the kitchen and and do and do all that. So that they the dishwasher is high on the item of the Conway resident employees. The, yeah. the dishwasher is original to the school. Oh, really? So it's 30 years or so. And it's a big commercial dishwasher. It get hot enough to meet modern health issues. They're, they're like, they, 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 the last time that it got fixed, they, they had to send away for a part. <laughs> a can, they cannibalized. Like, it, it's like. Yeah, they don't make the plastic. The, there, there's a place in like the desert that, that holds all the airplanes for when they need it. That's like, there, there's a company that has like old appliances <laughs> out in like a desert somewhere <laughs> that, that if you need it. But basically, they stopped making this thing, the, the, the dishwasher, 15 years ago. There's no parts for it. They can't fix it. And it'll be a miracle if it works next year. Um, so Bruce, you that it's worth it. And yes, yes. And Good thing we had two years in a remote learning, so it didn't break, it didn't break sooner. <laughs> Actually, they had to make, they had, that's all of our stuff broke down even more because they had to, they had to cook all summer long oh for the meal replacement program. yeah and, um, and get in the car and drive it to, to families houses right. the meals. All right. yeah so but according to the uh, principal if she had her druthers and she could only pick one it would be the air conditioner <laughs> but uh because that kids can wash their own dishes is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there's, a, there's a stream out front you know. <laughs> um the, well that's the, these three the, the total of the request is 82,000 yeah. yeah and the thing was that of all those things i wanted them most to replace the stall divider 
which is right underneath, which is somewhere on that page. The bathroom stall dividers. Oh yeah. That uh, everybody that goes to town meeting at. That, that those bath, those two bathrooms in there, those stall dividers are all rusted and look terrible. And last year somebody complained to me. Hmm. Just rent porta potties and put them outside for the yeah. <laughs> for town meeting. It's five thousand dollars to replace stall dividers. New restroom. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's five thousand five hundred. Does that make this? List? Yeah, it's five. It's twenty five hundred oh. per bathroom. Okay, next Huh? Next year. So, do anybody have any questions about the school capital request besides the ones you've already asked? No, not all. But one thing we did have actually last week with the finance committee met Phil was two hundred thirty-five thousand. I correctly call that's like your baseline figure you want to keep the grammar school stabilization fund uh, kind of level funded at. Is that, yeah, is that right? Right. And the thought was because of the furnaces replacing to be replaced. Replacement right? costs of two boilers. Right. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you. That was about it. Roy, have you any but questions, the, comments? The good news about that, though, is that um, the information that I had been given about what the balance was in the stabilization fund in the capital in the grammar school yeah. that I, when I reported that it was fifty some fifty nine thousand or something. That's what I said last week. Oh, no, it was way more than that. Yeah. I, I didn't listen to you. That doesn't mean. <laughs> no, I mean I had requested it in writing, and I received oh. it in writing, and it was. Uh, and it, uh, it, it was uh, yeah. So, but the balance is two sixty. So good. Um, so you know, here it says two sixty four eight. Yeah. Sixty four eight. That it must be one of the kinds of interest rates are going up and making all kinds of money now. And so this <laughs> the, the boilers up at the school. That's in anticipation they're going to shit the bed um idea so the the boilers their due their their expiration date was right along with the dishwasher right it was years ago and um if you don't have the money in place you can't replace it right away and sure. you have to shut the school down um, no, and do that. we actually have had uh, frontier had a boiler fail this year and Didn't Deerfield last year have something go? Deerfield had one last year and Waitley had that boiler fail this year. This year. And they didn't have a, a fund and wow. they, they had to close their school for 10 days. Wow. They bust them all the they, they home schooled for 10 days? To Frontier. Well, not. I think they had to go to Frontier the few days that they but um so so we're still going to want to put something back into the stabilization. We're going to have to keep it 235. So the next the next capital item is from Frontier. They have they made one request, school committee, uh, which is a total sum from all four towns of 75,000 to replace the walk-in cooler for the cafeteria food service of the Frontier Regional School of which Conway's portion would be 13867 and 50 The good news is that that sum is probably going to be about $12,000 less. The total sum is probably going to be about $12,000 less because of the four or five estimates that they got, two or three of them said the concrete pad needed to get replaced, and that was the higher amount. I think they're going to go with one of the with the contract one of the two contractors that said you can keep the same concrete pad as long as the board of health approves that's fine exactly so um, so that thirteen thousand should be closer to ten thousand I guess something else okay. <clears throat> so the the next cap uh, um, capital project request is this, so this will be a warrant article. This would be a warrant article. And and so we'll be asked to recommend it or not recommend it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Not that we have much of a choice. I mean, we have to. The Board of Health will uh, close it. And that, that uh, works overtime in the summertime for home meal replacement programs for kids, kids for meals, right? Right. And that's a whole mess. I don't know if you've been following that. They so right now the federal government is deciding whether to pass a budget for this year for this fiscal year which started june 1st last year yep. no, no, no. Fetched, uh, at the end of october 1st. Uh, october 1st right oh, so right. but we're halfway through more than halfway through the fiscal year and they yeah. haven't there and right now there there's nothing in there 
to keep the same um, uh, all the waivers for the school lunch nutrition whatever so all the um, basically the what it was three years ago where you were having to stick an apple on every plate on every kid's lunch even if the kids said, I don't want the apple you had to put it there and it would just go into the trash can or wherever yep. apples whatever and all that all those types of things as well as um, all these revenue things so basically we haven't been charging for lunch this whole school year because the current federal program is everybody is treated as if they're they can't pay right and um there's a possibility that if that that all of a sudden all the schools across the country are going to have this enormous budgetary hole right. of massive losses in your food service because you didn't charge all year long because you were following the law right. but now they say uh, we're doing a budget and we're just going to ignore that so um so that might be a they might be coming to us in the whenever the federal budget is done saying they used this to is a mess all that cost shifting got that right, <laughs> got that right. <laughs> so the, the next capital request is from our police department and chief ken Winnett. so this was he talked about this that when he was here two post-mounted portable speed monitoring display boards at 3700 each and where were they gonna go <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna tell you, <laughs> gonna tell you. <laughs> no i thought, I thought yeah, he, he wanted did. one yeah. of them was around the elementary <laughs> one of them was by the elementary school and yeah. the other one was going to rotate around between shelter falls road uh what's the other notorious speeding road oh waitley road waitley road i knew you were going to remember that of course yeah and um those are the two really those are the ones i, I think these really work I, I don't know what you guys think when you drive along and suddenly a flashing light comes on that says you're five miles over the speed limit yep they're like we all are but yeah time. i think what people don't realize is that you can for uh, another couple thousand you can get the the extra the license plate reader yes the, the camera <laughs> that, Forget that. That. Didn't ask for that no though. he doesn't he doesn't <laughs> but you know you i know. think it's i think it's a small price to pay for yeah. uh i mean replaces I think for road uh, safety is very important now. Places, human labor <laughs> if it saves uh, a serious accident of any kind it's a small price they put this on these on route 116 right there in front of all the student housing yes yeah. yes to remind you that you're and there's one right in front of frontier where you, yeah. uh, you exit the frontier parking lot i mean what two years ago somebody was killed crossing Route 16 yeah. by the cliffside apartments while that sign was oh yeah but now that they, sign was there at that time too the lights are there now and, yeah well yeah or you could just get pulled over by kenny on waitley road yeah 20 years ago 25 years yeah, ago right right <laughs> and never speak again but it is it is a a rare it's rare to have a I think they were uh, yeah, oh, they a cruiser. I think, a car, yeah, yeah, a few years ago. Yeah, I think the good have one of them. On them is is uh, one ahead, man. Right. Still running. Speak up, Roy. Hey, Roy. Can you talk up, please? Committee. You have what? the floor, Roy. What's that? Yeah, I just you have the floor. Well, behind that, these uh, these uh, automated speed monitors is is great because uh, there is goodwill. They remind people, and uh, I think they're effective. My two cents. Yeah. Especially people who live on Whateley Road would appreciate. <laughs> and, and it's like it's an art form too. As you're driving past it, you want it to switch from red to green ever so briefly. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. but you don't want it to be you don't want to be stuck on green. You don't Some want to be stuck on red. Smiley faces. Have you seen the one? The, like yes. smiley yes. frowny. Yes, <laughs> smile to frown. That's what that's what this is going to have. He said. <laughs> Those work better than. <laughs> there you go. Anything else? The next capital request from our highway department. Um, the slim down capital request. Yeah. And the one in the packet might be incorrect. It was 140 and not one. Yeah. But didn't we talk about this last we week? We did last week. Yes. yes. Was it wrong to tell us how many um, hours were on that engine? Because we you know that someone's going to. On ask. the fence mower? Yes. <sighs> right. Yes, correct. So th this. For what, it's, for what it's worth, uh, I, let me just mention my son just purchased a 2006 Cubota um, excavator 
with five freaking thousand hours on it. It's a lot. He paid twenty eight thousand bucks for this thing. So Ron is not that. Um, uh, these things they do keep their. He paid a lot for this thing. They keep their value. And I mean, in general, this, that machine today twenty is ninety some odd thousand bucks in in this this year's vintage. So considering the age of this thing, and my son didn't buy this flippantly. He was hunting around for something. Um, uh, the, the new price tags on this stuff are astronomical, but if you don't have a way to repair it, I mean, my son does this kind of thing so he can take care of it. Um, That's why Ron raised it 125 to 140. What's that? 125 was the original your, the original price, and then it got turned down for a couple yeah, we, got, we got 140 on well, this. Well, I'm looking. Yeah, I, yeah, so. I was more interested in this over the fence. I don't have the paperwork. I, I, was that emailed around what you're looking at? I oh, yeah, know. it just went out uh, yeah. two hours ago, right? Not two hours oh. ago. Morning. No, that was the. Uh, oh, this is the warrant. This is the warrant you're talking about? Yes, this is a uh, initial Capital draft warrant. Request, Capital okay. request. Capital request. The capital part of it is that over the a over the fence mower on there yeah that's what yeah. we're talking about but so roy it was on what we went over last week yeah with you right you'll have that list yes yeah okay yeah, yeah. yeah. There. i mean that thing there has me scratching my head because uh it just I don't think there was much trade in <laughs> value though on the one that we have now that was wasn't that his part of his concern mm -hmm. Is that the, the the longer you use it, the less value it has? Right. Yeah, of course. So that's why we were asking about the you know how many hours for. Yeah, because yeah, if we don't, it'll be invariably asked at town meeting by at least several different people. Well, that's why I want to anticipate all of the questions. Sure, of course. <laughs> so we're prepared. Matter of fact, I'm always suggesting that if we have a pre-town meeting, that maybe Ron make a presentation. Although they they have been saying this last stretch that uh, unprecedented for the history, your uh, your used vehicle. May well be worth more next year than it is this year. Yeah. Yeah. I know that's been going on the last couple. So, you know, this stuff about the equipment and everything. Right. Well, that, yeah. That's, that's good for the town. It means our RV fees will go up. <laughs> but now our insurance rates will go up too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I like that. Just think, jumping in regarding the fire truck. Um, there need to be two articles we have to agree to that we will set up a stabilization fund and then yes. capitalize. Yes, so that's in the current things, Article 9 and 10. Roger. We need to set up a stabilization fund. fund. Uh, it pumps water. <laughs> like the one we bought. It comes to your rescue ago. when your house is on fire. Yep. Isn't like it like the, the one that they can. A couple of years ago. They can drive it to the so river, the right? They can. That's what I thought that they yeah. can. It, um, it's it's to replace when this is bought. It, it's replacing one that at that point will be twenty five years old. Understood. So what is a rescue? It's just a fire truck. There's it has a special name. It's, that's it's, it's different than the, than the one we spent four fifty. But, but I thought I think that it. it it's just water storage. Just water storage. We can pump in, store water, and pump it out too. Yeah. Pump in and pump out. Which we need all over town now. Yeah, of course. And actually, somebody somebody asked me a question. So the current pumper truck, apparently the pin striping that came from the factory <laughs> um, on the side of it is a big letter Z. Oh. And somebody asked me if the letter Z on our fire truck is indicative of our support for Russia. In the Ukraine conflict. Oh. Yeah. And I said sometimes a Z is just a Z. Yeah, could we the most? So uh yeah, but go figure. Go figure. Um I guess if, if uh, Chief Baker can make a presentation at the of course of time meeting with the pre-time meeting, you know, probably people have questions. Yeah, so what exactly is, I mean, this is good to anticipate the questions, like, what is a pumper? <laughs> I mean, well, this is, this is 200,000 more than the, the pumper we bought. They yeah. to be custom made. The regular one wouldn't fit in a barn. Right. So this is 200,000 more than that. I'm just wondering, what's rescue? What we bought before wasn't called a rescue. 
which I'm wondering. Well, what is, is I know one, one, one of the two trucks ice? can hold a lot more water than the other of the two trucks. I, I know that's that. That's pumper. Yeah, that's the pumper. But I mean, there's plenty of places in town where if they did show up, there's no water to pump. Right. Yeah. Your house, you're downtown somewhere, right? Yeah. If somebody's yeah. going, yeah. Yep, we got the river. Yep. Maybe and they have there. procedures for all that, but I mean, yeah, back back in the, go so far to try and get some water. Yeah. Back in the day, they had what fifty different little yeah, ponds that ponds. they dug, fire, fire ponds all over town. Sure. I think now there's less than a dozen of them. We've just built a new one up on Poland Road. A fire pond, right? right yeah. yeah. To that big beaver dam. It kind of was already like that. Well, but but making it a fire pond means putting in pipes so that you can you can suck it. You know, pipe right on the edge of the road, you can suck it out of the pot. Yeah. You don't have to throw, throw a hose in the pot. This he doesn't expect to replace for another no. two years, basically, five years. So, so you, need to, you need to start a new account uh -huh. and then decide what we're going to fund it. We talked about how, how much of it when we did the last one and, and you said it was 450,000. Yeah, give it to How you. much did we have saved up for it? Not sure, but I think we had a good half of it. Good half it? of it? Yeah, pretty sure. I don't get those, those papers. So half of this will be like 300,000 yeah. per or so, which in five years. Oh, no, five years, that'd be. <laughs> Equivalent to two bucks on a tax fee, too. <laughs> yes, right. Sixty thousand a year. Yeah. I'm figuring the town still is valued by the state about two sixty, two seventy million. Yeah. So every two seventy thousand we spend. Yep. Yeah, our eleven tax appropriate tax base is about two hundred sixty. Yeah. So two of those is less than six. Mm -hmm. That's two bucks on the rate. Yeah, if we can start saving, it makes sense. More, it's just you can try to spend less money. Do that too. Maybe you see what's been quite a bit. But we can't option, well, we, you can't take, we can't take a fixed price option on the fire no truck, truck. No truck, no truck. Unfortunately, after the schools, it's the next biggest one. The schools, you got Shelby, they never show where the P is. You know? <laughs> Well, that's today's price. Six years. I can tell you where the P is by now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holding it in right now as we speak. Do we have Wait, to bring it to that all to get right fixed, now? huh? <laughs> or is that no? Oh, no, that's, a, that's an article. If you look at the draft no, warrant, no, it's an yeah. article now to create okay, a new fire truck stabilization. I see, fund. great. Yep. Two, different, two different motions. Is there any other money articles that we want to talk about with them? Um, Public safety building engineering. Yeah. And uh, MPT grant matching. Mm -hmm. Grant matching. I mean, I think those make sense. And then we talked about our using ARPA funds, right? Those two we did. Yep. It was also the. Uh, Add funds for the um, to get ready for some retirement files. We did that. Yeah, she's the baker and all that. All right, done. Yeah. Oh no, we're talking about um, not the school, but sick leave by our retirement. Yeah. To add more money to the compensated absence fund for. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know. I just. So these are that dark, this is our fund? No, no, there's, so, yeah, I know there's a lot in front of you and you haven't seen it yet, so there's a lot to digest. I don't know if you want to digest it over the week and then Probably. discuss it. Probably a better idea. Yeah. My garage it up. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of them are just the, the normal OPEB and yeah. um, there's the free cash to help pay the highway garage mode. Yep. So, like the school ones, 
Well, how do you figure how are we going to fund that film? <clears throat> Who's capital ones? We got the request, but then there's it's kind of blank about well, what is what's our method of funding? The capital would a request would be funded out of the capital stabilization fund. Yeah, and then we'd have to replenish the uh, stabilization. Some extent, but the... not as much because we're a little, a little bit. Yeah, we're a little bit heavy. It's about forty thousand. So. Yeah. So spend eighty, replace you know, replace forty like that. And from the, the do the the monitoring signs. Yeah, I, mean, I, I still have questions about putting money into OPEB um, just because being on the budget committees of the schools and um, the school frontier and Farming grammar frontier has not put OPEB aside for five years now. Mm -hmm. okay. um, uh -huh. And the auditor says it's not necessary that we're all right there. And that, but well, the auditor said that oh, 20,000 a year is what they recommend as part of the management discussion. And the thing of it is, does, uh, does frontier float their own bonds? No, they don't. They can. Frontier has bonding power, Roy. Yes. What, what's that? Frontier Regional Union 38 School District has has bonding powers. No, but when was the last bond they floated? For the track? Yeah. No, not for the track. They float for doing the live media center. I think they floated yeah. a bond of three million. Was that like, like two thousand or something? It was earlier. Yeah, oh, okay. and it, and they have a uh, there's gonna they need a three million dollar roof repa replacement. And and their got their auditor that's says that's going to be next year. Their auditor says it's okay to stop. Well, how much they have in the OPEB? That's the uh, that's a bigger question. Um, we put we put there's a couple years in a row where we put like fifty or seventy into it. Oh. And, but um, uh, our yeah. OPEB our OPEB liability Roy, is estimated actuarially estimated by the auditors was Elliot Clark at about one point two million. Yeah, forty yeah. what thirty years down the road? Like those aren't. Them? That's not real. Yeah. But twenty thousand a year <laughs> is uh, whatever it is. Yeah, it's a pittance, and really, when you think yeah. about it, uh, the token it, of goodwill. If they just want to see something, but I don't put ten thousand in. You know, they it... talk about it. twenty. Twenty is what was right. Is, is good. That's what the auditors recommend. Yeah. Well, I'm so I'm surprised that they haven't recommended that for Frontier, but maybe. Maybe well, that's uh, because we're putting it every year. <laughs> well, no, maybe but the school says it, maybe it, uh, school three years. That's not even one of the ones they said you put in. Right. Yeah. Maybe the regional school districts by their or any by their nature have a uh, inherently higher rating than a small municipality. I don't know. Could be. Yeah. Well, theoretically, in Massachusetts, no municipality is allowed to pay uh, to uh, renege on their obligations. So implicitly, there's a state guarantee. Of course, if we default, that means that we go under state fiscal uh, management, which uh, is basically the Uber police uh, telling us what to do. Right, but every well, town, every yeah, town is even just a little bit bigger than us can't, has not been, <laughs> like the, the unfunded liabilities of Springfield alone is 60 uh, million absolutely. or something. Worcester is more than that. All that. Oh, absolutely. But even like Greenfield is yeah. beyond, like is just stupendous. Yeah, but, but, you know, it's like, take a snapshot today. Now, what's the liability? You know, so next year, if it's a little higher, you got to raise taxes. Or, yep. I mean, in a blood <laughs> sense. You know? I think Alan's right. State does guarantee this, and they will have to step in for all kinds of municipalities. And those among us that have been responsible and paying our own way all along are going to be screwed. Screwed. Not only screwed, we're going to be subsidizing for all those towns and cities that haven't. Yeah, and is, that's you know. right. So, so let's let's uh, <laughs> let's abandon <laughs> responsibility and spend, baby, spend. See, that's see, right. yeah, twenty grand. grand argument to be made for that. Twenty grand right? can go a long way these days, right? Just buy two more. <laughs> you buy a zero gravity, zero turn more. Oh, okay. Jesus. Right. Um, Listen, gentle people, 
I, I, my time is really limited this evening because I have a <laughs> semi tech emergency. So oh, right. is right. anything else you want my opinion on? Let me ask or but, else. Yeah, well, before you go, I saw Veronique, the warrant period ends Monday, April 25th. Right. So that week the finance committee should meet separately. And, and once we have the final, the final wish list and make a recommendation, correct? Yeah, we yes. can discuss maybe the following Monday. What is that? May, whatever, first. With jointly with the select board, because we have to get this out to town quickly, right? Right. All right. Yeah, that's about, it's five weeks out from the so 25th, is about five weeks out from the town. So meeting. next Monday, what do we, what do we, what do you want to, what do you want to discuss for next Monday? What's on the uh, jointly? I, going over the, the discussion of the of articles. I mean, okay, yeah. we'll continue. We, all right. Yeah. Okay. See what else other fun I, things pop up between now and we start I have, voting on I have some of the ones. Start I, getting I, some I, of the votes out of the way. All right. That sounds I, good. I will probably be absent next Monday because I'm out of town. If I can make the meeting, I will. But right. um, if I can't, uh, can. or you need, or if you're going to do a vote, that's uh, but. Three out of five. Yes. I mean, if you have. No, yeah, you, be you Rihanna, Alan, you, Rihanna, and Tom are enough for. If yeah, so you can call in. I'm going to call. I, I have to call in too next Yeah, week. but I may, I may not be in a place where I can do that. Oh, all right. Understood. Uh, Thank you. Um, anyway. So, and, and I'll have a revised draft sure. um, of the warrant for next week. Thank you. So uh, if there's any change in the warrant numbers up, can let us know because it's been uh, past things change numbers around. We're like, hey, what, are we, what are we voting on? Night, Folks, I'm going to say good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. And uh, are, we, are we excused from the dinner table? Yeah. 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 I've got to make sure Conway's uh, technology doesn't fall off the cliff. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to, to, I've got our emergency issues I'm dealing with. Okay, bye. We should meet the week. We should meet the next week. Oh, I vote to uh, close the meeting jointly with the select board. The batteries gone down. <laughs> yeah. Just switch the so, so this one probably ought to be plugged in one, when we leave it. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it in between weeks. Yeah. Flash and yellow. Okay. Yeah. Here, you can take this one too. There we, go. Okay. we didn't put the owl. The owl wasn't on the agenda. It no, it's on my town administrator. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Although it should have been on the we, agenda. We, we should vote to pay for it, but it's, oh right, we have gotcha. the money to pay for it out of all of our pay money. I gotcha. So we don't need to prove any money for it. Well, you don't know how much it's going to be yet. No. We know it's going to be around a thousand dollars. About two thousand, maybe the most twenty five hundred because of the dedicated yeah. laptop, a tripod, a locking cabinet. Yeah, the owl with the tripod. Ribbons, balloons. Twelve hundred. A laptop, seven hundred. We have two thousand there. Then a cabinet. He was choking at that. <laughs> so, are, what are we? Are we on? Uh, my update. We're on town administrator update. Okay. Yeah. All right.
Um, so the town has, we did advertise again for the position um, in the highway department and got one response of the interview tomorrow. So hopefully that will all be well and I'll have somebody to put forward next week. Um, I did do an, an OSB training just because we're going to be needing to post bids and that kind of thing soon. I know we can get help from her talk, but it just seems to make sense to me. Yeah, I didn't get to read my last week, but I did finish my classes and I should be getting my certifications soon. So for um, uh, certified public purchasing. And and I did discover that you know there are contracts with the city. I mean, I knew this, but you know, we could hopefully we're getting as good a pricing with places like WD Mason and Staples, but we're going to investigate going to the state contract to see if we can get even better pricing. But aren't they both on the state contract anyway? They are on the state contract, yeah. but we haven't necessarily been using, you have to say you want the state price. That you want yeah. to be on the state, you're using the state contract, uh -huh. whatever you know the number is. Um, and we, the finance committee and I met to review all the non-article two money articles last week. And then I met with Brian Donovan from Waitley to, to see the owl. Now, the way it would work, the reason I had to set up the way it is today is that's exactly how it would work with the owl. Uh -huh. The owl would just be in the middle on a tripod. It's a speaker, camera, and microphone. And for instance, at tonight's meeting, nobody can see anybody who is at that table without me getting up and twisting it around. And the way you would see it up on Zoom is at the very top, anybody who joined in, like, Lord, you know, Lori and Louise there, they'd be little, you know, up at the top. Uh -huh. And then there would be a panoramic, which would show 360 of the room. And it has at the bottom up to three spaces, depending on who's talking. Uh -huh. And the owl just keeps shifting around. And it was really wonderful. So all I'd have to set up would be the owl, the projector, and be done. And, you know, and the dedicated laptop so that other committees and commissions and boards could also make use of it, you know, so they could start reporting the meetings on Zoom or they could, you know, or hearings, or hearings. Yep, absolutely. That was it. Do we have to vote to approve the pan for it, or if it's out of peg, no, and it's less than five thousand, so it's not a it's not an issue. I mean, you're welcome to if you wish to. <laughs> you think you like? You think it's a good? Idea. I think it's a good idea. You like? I mean, I've seen it. We have. I mean, we everyone has an owl at my work now. There's so many owls. It's, oh, is that yeah. right? <laughs> it's like all the conference rooms. I mean, that's what well, you know. We went from Zoom to you know. So you're an owl. To owl. You like yeah? I mean, I've, I've never actually used it, but like I do see them everywhere. Um, it seems to be the way people are making hybrid meetings work well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I do like the idea of like everyone in a meeting being able to, you know, be on screen and be heard. And... All right. Seems like seems like the owl's popular. Enjoy your owl. <laughs> can I ask an owl question? You can try. Yeah. I can I can try. Well, no, the question is, do we have something on the bylaws already that say that we can have hybrid meetings? Because after June 15th, it needs to be on our bylaws for us to continue with hybrid meetings. You mean July 15th? Uh, oh, sorry. Yes, July 15th. Are we putting something on the warrant to get that on our bylaws? So I'm sorry, are you saying that we're not allowed to be hybrid? It, the, the select board would after, still be person. Yeah. After July 15th, it's supposed to be 100% in person unless you have something in your bylaws stating that the town allows for hybrid meetings. I, I, aren't hybrid meetings considered in person? I don't know that, but it feels to me that they well, are. High, it's kind of like the half and half where some of us are Zooming in or calling in and some are in person. I thought it was that if the officials who are calling the meeting were all present in person, then allowing access wouldn't require anything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me double check that. I just want to, I just want to, I mean, I love the idea of getting it. I just want to make sure that, you know, we have something that allows for the hybrid meetings in the bylaws so the state can't come back and say, eh. When we met in person before, we still allowed people to dial up. Right. We yeah. Still had, true. We still had phones. Yeah. 
phone in. And, uh, you know, hi hybrid is just a more advanced version of calling in remotely. Remotely, yeah. I think you're right, Bob. I just... Uh, I, I don't know. I actually, one, one of the things that our new town attorney uh, had asked that, that we say at every meeting that is that uh, let people know that the meeting is live, even that even if they're participating remotely, and that uh, if there's a problem with the remote connection, that they, they need to be advised that the meeting is still going to go on and go and and there's still going to be votes taking place even if the remote I mean, connection yeah. is lost. Okay. Um, Ross had suggested that language on the agenda for everything that yeah that people would understand that if they can't zoom if something happens to the zoom the meeting goes on and we did that at the school committee we printed every mm -hmm. we put printed every little thing and the the introduction to the, every agenda was three pages long <laughs> it was I, think, all the, I think it's more or less came to mind because like roy dialed in and he's a member of the committee so that kind of makes you know because he wasn't live that makes that would make for a hybrid meeting right although they did so. have free they did, they, they, have, they did have a quorum handy. Who yeah, was the other not, person that was there? Yeah, because it's not July 15th yet. We don't have to worry about that yet. After July right, 15th, right. I'm thinking in the future. Person. Right. But but the boards would still have to be in person after that, but then the public could zoom in at their convenience. There was also something about the legislature addressing this topic again. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where that I should we should have asked Natalie about that. Yeah. She was here last Monday. But we'll see her on Friday. Mm -hmm. Right. Or we might, yeah, or I was going to say, maybe we could throw some, I know we have so many articles on the warrant already, but putting something very minuscule in, in our bylaws, allowing for it in certain cases, you know, Erica's not all the time, but articles. <laughs> you know, Erica's got the flu and she doesn't want to sit next to you, Phil. So she wants oh. to be able to remote in, you know. Yeah, let's make sure that that can happen. At Waitley, when they meet <laughs> like we are, they can all sit very far apart, you know, six feet separation. All right, I'm going to go away now and keep my mouth shut. Yeah, uh, don't worry. <laughs> nice okay. to hear your voice. See you, Larry. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. Mail. Select board member, anybody got any comments or concerns? No, I'm just, but, I, but Bernie, I'm going to want to connect with you in the next couple of weeks so, as I work on this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I said that I would put together. Are we going to discuss the, the, the letter that, we, that came in that you mentioned here? Mail. I, we have two of them in mail. I think you did send it to us in. Oh, oh, you have two. Okay. Yeah. yeah I Which yeah. one were you? I, the Fukarski one. Mm -hmm. I, I think you mailed that to us. I'm not sure if it didn't back it though. No, it is, yeah. Oh, it and, is? Okay. and the next fan female too. So basically, that, you know, the neighbors. They, they were right. About. <laughs> they're, not, they're not crazy. Something's going oh, we're on. Talking about the next yeah, yeah, so yeah. The, yeah, the next amp, next amp wrote that, um, that basically they have discovered a scientific basis for the. Uh, complaints of buzzing and um, audible noise, and actually, that that those noises when you actually hear them, those are really annoying. I just this is the you know audio file that they emailed and. Like that was yeah. one of my, yeah. I mean, I'm, I didn't read this letter as saying that they've really figured much out. They're saying well, that it's well, real. They, they, yeah, well, they figured it's out real, that it's real. And they think it's the inverters. <laughs> it's right. always real. Well, they, no, it's the, not. It's yeah. not always real. It's sometimes just completely uh, the, subjective. I mean, they could have both said no. It's like we, you know, nothing. It's not the our noise problem. that you can hear is the same frequency as the noise that they can measure on the lines, but. Well, they traced it to the inverters. The they consultant's opinion is this is conclusive evidence that the inverters are the source of the noise, and our engineers agree. It says the first option is that the inverters are malfunctioning. But and the other option and, is that they're not. But either way, like they've they've <laughs> they've acknowledged that there is an issue. So I mean, the, I, I thought that was acknowledged months ago. Well. 
No, I, the, the, I thought I thought that this third sentence in the first paragraph was the key one. The consultant's opinion or the source of the noise and our engineers agree. So as soon when I read that, you know, that's them agreeing that there is a legit basis for the noise complaints. And up to that point, they had not agreed to that. And they're saying, okay, yeah, great. So, when they replace the inverters and the problem goes away, I'll be thrilled. <laughs> or they, maybe they, they filed a warranty. I mean, yeah, yeah. Site specific condition causing a unique interaction. But, you know, it says the second possibility the inverters are operating correctly and there's a problem with the grid lines that go from next amp up to yeah. 116. If that's a yeah, problem, but, then that's a problem. That's, right, that's, but that's, that's, then they still have to, you know. They're both possibilities. I don't. But, they, you know, the one thing that is. we know that the, the project is offline. Yeah. And it's oh, offline yeah. until this is fixed. I'm, uh, they didn't come out right, and quite so. say that, but. Um, no, no. It, no, it will remain offline. And the, pr the thing about that is that they have sold the electricity that's generated from that. And Remember? that means they're hopefully getting it from some other array that they have. Um, I guess, but it they also. Have lots of arrays. All it, also, it also means that they have a vested interest in getting it back online as soon as possible. And they certainly. Which do. means they have a vested interest in fixing this problem as soon as possible. They have a much bigger vested interest than the utility does. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't know. I thought that that was good and that um, made me feel, you know, that next next amp was actually addressing concerns. I've always thought that. Yep. And, and um, the there are some that have lumped next amp in with some of these other um, I don't know some some of these more fly by night kind of solar operators that where where towns I, I was talking about Peru or somebody. That, they can't even get someone to answer phone calls about the solar array that's in their town now. And that, um... No, I think that's that's the advantage of having a large Massachusetts-based yeah. company. <laughs> right. But also, as long as it's offline, I mean, the legitimate health and lifestyle concerns that the neighbors have, it, it, they're not having to right. deal with that right now. Yeah. So, right. And hopefully, that gets resolved. Yeah, and then um, the, we, we also had a letter from um, Mr. Pekarsky, John Pekarsky. is a landowner in Conway, is not a resident of Conway, but everybody knows him. We've seen him in Pekarsky's, I mean, uttering it now. Um, he has concerns, and he's been, uh, he's been writing letters. This is the second or third letter that I've seen. Since 2011? No, just in the past year. Okay. Um, 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 I thought yeah, somewhere yeah. around 10 years ago, this was investigated, you know, Bob Baker and, uh, you know, as the road crew and uh, the Conservation Commission at the time all looked into this. Yes. It's been investigated by three different yes. town administrators. It's been investigated by the Conservation Commission. When and Mr. Pekarsky, and, and well, yeah, and DEP. And when Mr. Pekarsky came to me, I mean, I was there when he came to Ross. And then I talked to Tom, who'd spoken with him and investigated. And then when I became town administrator, he came to me again. And he said, I can't move forward with anything unless I have some kind of proof that something has happened. And he couldn't provide, he brought me some photographs, but all they were were photographs that had a date on them, but it didn't show anything. And, you know, then looking into it further, I discovered that it has been thoroughly investigated and um, I, there's, there's really nowhere for me to go from here. I have nothing to base anything. And to be, and, and I, and I also followed up with this. I sat down with the, with the person who was the highway boss at the time. Um, and he said that the allegations as to the highway department's conduct in this letter are not true, not accurate, that they just didn't ever do that, that never happened. So I don't. Can we, I mean, so this Thomas Grusco that he copied, the DEP representative, I mean, is there. Can... I have not heard from that person. The person probably 
I believe this is who took over from Mark Stinson. Um, so I can certainly reach out to him. Um, but I'll be honest, I think they probably have a file on this already that says it's been thoroughly investigated because I had several conversations with people. So I really wasn't going to go anywhere with it unless they contacted me and said, is this an issue? I mean, is it worth, you know, writing a letter back and copying, I mean, you know, copying. It's Cisco always, and, it's and, always and, worth communicating to um, a resident or a, or a Conway taxpayer right, in know. the same manner that they communicated to us. Right. It's respectful. I mean, at this point, you could say the select board received your letter and the select board will not be taking any further action. We've investigated in contact with DEP. We don't have. I suppose we could put a you know, warrant article. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriate town funds to do whatever Mr. Pekarski wants us to do. <laughs> but. The announcements. <laughs> yeah, the announcements. Uh, yes, this Friday at 1 p.m. 1 p.m., okay. Uh, the ceremonial child abuse prevention flag raising. I think I can't be there. I I thought I couldn't, but now I think I might actually be able to be in a funeral. No. No. And, I, and I did see the chair of our flag committee. We have a, we have a town flag committee. Um, is it one or noon? Did you is say? it one? One, okay. And uh, and I, I said about this proposal, and he said, the only thing we put up on our flagpole is the American flag. And I said, well, you have an MIA, POW, MIA thing. It's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, sure, that's fine then. <laughs> well, thank you. Recorder had a story about the one that they did in Greenfield. Yes. So yes, and the Greenfield one had a dancing <laughs> troupe, and they had a know, music. Like, they had music. I was like, God, I hope we're not. Expected. And I'm like, and and I and I, I I saw Bob Baker. I'm like, hey, look at these other towns. I look at look what they're doing. We're gonna have what? I'm gonna bring my dog. Um, but who, what else? So he said he'll he'll come. He'll put on his dress uniform. Oh. We're making progress. Let's see who else we can make come. Um... Natalie will come. Yeah, there you go. There you go. But I don't know. I don't think we're going to have any dancing. We're not going to have a dancing troupe. We're not going to have music for them. I don't know. I don't know what the appropriate music would be for child abuse prevention week. Next meeting. <laughs> Next meeting is uh, Monday, April 11th. Sounds good. Same place, same bat channel. Motion to close the meeting, adjourn the meeting. Second. Second, ma'am. Oh, okay. Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you.